This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Also brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the outcast, the creepy and depraved, the bizarre creations not meant for the normal world. Embrace the twisted weirdness of Freak Show Cinema! On July 30th, 2023, we lost Paul Rubens to cancer. And I lost one of my biggest childhood icons growing up. I am the luckiest boy in the world. I was a huge Pee Wee Herman fan as a kid. There's been plenty of adults who act like children for comedy, but Pee Wee created a whole world that supported it, and often in different ways. Whether it was in a playhouse, on the road, or in a circus, Pee Wee always found an environment for his oddness to shine. Much like the old Adam West Batman series, you could watch his adventures in two totally different ways as a kid and then as an adult, and both were equally entertaining. As a kid, you love the energy, silly voices, and weird visuals. As an adult, you love the imagination, surreal humor, and of course, ton of innuendos that you missed when you were younger. Now, Pee Wee, there's two things missing from this drawing. <laughs> I know, are they wrong? Sometimes. I know, I know. Earrings. He created an identity and even worlds that were all his own. So, I think it only makes sense to look at the movies that helped create those worlds. In honor of Pee Wee, we're gonna take a look at his three big movies, because they always had big in the title. Let's take a look back to 1985 to see Tim Burton and Pee Wee's first movie. That's Pee Wee, not Paul Rubens, as he did a few very random movies before. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Keep in mind, this is before Pee-wee's Playhouse hit the air, so he wasn't quite an established icon. However, he was popping up in more and more places, making appearances on several shows. Because of this, there was a sense of experimentation. It had not a huge budget, but just big enough that you could explore an idea, but also work within limitations in a creative way. The film centers around Pee-wee living in basically a funhouse, playing with toys, buying props, and fawning over his prized possession, his bike. Good morning. When his bratty neighbor Francis, who seems to be mentally about the same age as him, about seven or eight, I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? Infinity! Proclaims he wants the bike for himself, Pee Wee refuses, resulting in it getting stolen. He goes on a road trip to try and get it back, and naturally stumbles across all sorts of strange characters along the way. The film is a perfect combination of both Pee Wee and Tim Burton. Maybe because both were still in the process of discovering their styles, so neither one overshadowed the other. It certainly has a lot of surreal imagery that, being a PG-80s movie, is naturally scary as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but it also has that whimsical, out of left field Pee-wee humor. Did you tell me where I could find Kevin Morton? Marlo, do you know what stage Kevin Morton is working on? Yeah, it's, uh, stage six. Thanks! If Pee-wee was just a big kid in the real world, I feel like his antics would get kinda boring. But much like the Rock from the Sun, the charm comes from the rest of the world being odd, too. There's a deleted scene where the owner of the prop store does his hair in a mohawk, which they had to cut out. But because the world is so odd and random anyway, you see him with the mohawk and nobody questions it. In a strange way, not explaining it almost makes more sense. Probably just a dog. Because the budget wasn't huge, the effects had to look a little cheap. But it just added to the bizarre nature of the film. <laughs> a lot of them don't look realistic, but they do look otherworldly sometimes having the feel of a cartoon, which is what Pee-wee usually feels like. A grown-up kid in a silly animated short. Everything from his obsession with his bike, his indifference to girls, his need to get the last stupid insult. Pee-wee, listen to reason. Oh, come on! I'm listening to reason. All harkens to not only how a child would act, but also how a child sees the world. To a little kid, you can befriend a bike gang by doing a dorky dance. That strange lady who dropped you off probably was a ghost. And if you sing deep in the heart of Texas, Texans will sing it. The stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> Though that last one might be more real to life than you think. Big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> the side characters and all their unique quirks feel right at home in this movie. You have no idea who or what is going to pop up next, but they always leave an impression. Andy! Even the smallest role like the older brother from Wonder Years. 
He only has a few lines, but man, do you remember them. I have been ready since first call. I am ready. Roll. The jokes aren't so crazy they become overbearing, but they're not so subtle you forget them anytime soon either. They're just the right amount of odd. I have no clue why Pee-wee has that voice at the end of the film he cameos in. Paging Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, you have a telephone call at the front desk. Maybe in the movie they thought his voice was too odd, so they dubbed it. Maybe that's how Pee-wee dubs ADR in a film. Maybe it's Maybelline, I don't know. It's part of what makes the film so intriguingly random. Have you got any messages for room 104? No, nothing right now, Mr. Herman. I gotta bring up the music, too. If it's a Tim Burton movie, it's very likely Danny Elfman is doing the score. And especially in the early days, he would add a level of energy that would ignite what, again, they admitted wasn't that high a budget. We've seen these kind of breakfast machines before where they kind of put everything together in a goofy way. But Elfman's music takes what's honestly a pretty done idea and turns into an instantly entertaining event. The music, just like almost everything in the production, has a sense of energy and joy, even when it's trying to be dark and scary. There's a perkiness to everything on screen that's infectious and just puts you in a good mood. Whether it's riding by Santa Claus and Godzilla, sitting in a dinosaur's mouth, or having Buttercup hit on you, there's always something strange and fun around the corner. It's one of those movies I can't say is a great film, but man, it's hard to find anything wrong with it. It did such a good job defining its own world with its own rules and having such a good time doing so that it never gets in the way of its own good time. It's a silly, but enjoyable, one-of-a-kind classic. Then there's the other ones. Splendid! I'm very satisfied with these results! I might need a minute before I go into those. I remember when I was a little lad. Billy, you're 12. Looking for a gold star, the get it all back to school hat. You're going back to school right now, get out. The first day back is almost here, and so are all the list of essentials your kid needs for class. Why are you doing that voice? With DoorDash, you can find everything they need only one place for an A plus year. Why are you doing that voice so well? With DoorDash, you'll enjoy next level convenience with delivery in the hour, making it easier than ever to get your back to school needs fast. You're gonna miss your ride fast. All your favorite retail grocery and convenience stores are on the app, so you can shop for everything your kids need for back to school. There went the bus. You can fill their backpacks, their bellies, and the pantry this back to school season. All right, get in the car, you little piece of Be prepared before the big day arrives. Stock up with on-the-go breakfast, lunchbox staples, and brands everybody loves. I do not love you right now. Shop DoorDash to get everything you need for the back to school season delivered right to your door. Order now for stress-free back to school shopping. Use the promo code MOVIETIME to get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 and more at convenience, grocery, or retail stores on DoorDash. Who are you making a deal with? Are you dealing drugs? That's 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more using the promo code MOVIETIME. Don't forget, that's code MOVIETIME for 50% off your next order. Terms apply. Billy, I'm gonna count to 10 and you're gonna stop that voice. Looks like you need chime. What? You may think a credit score is no big deal, One, but if you're dealing with two, a low credit score three, or no credit score at four, all, that could be a problem five, for your future financial six. goals. Ow! That's why millions of people swear by Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Ow! Credit Builder is just a better way to build credit. Ow! You build your credit score safely with everyday purchases and on-time payments. How do you know what a credit card is? Home Alone 2. Plus, there's no annual fee or credit check to get started. I have no son. No annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply. Use it everywhere Visa Credit Cards are accepted. Build credit using your own money. If you don't stop doing that voice, I'm turning this car around. Good, no school. All right, um... Now, with a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Overdraft up to $200 with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. I am asking you politely to stop. And I am asking you politely to shut up. What? Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. Access 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. Easily find one near you with the Chime app. 
pay friends through Chai no matter what bank account they use and cash out your monthly fee free. Billy. There is no Billy, only old guy. Do I need to call an exorcist? Yes. Your credit's a big deal, so build up yours with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with a $200 plus qualified direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. Billy, what, what are you waving in front of my face? I need you to read this. While I'm driving? Pull over a woman pretending to be my mother. Oh, for crying out loud. All right, let me see here. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stripe Bank, NA member FDIC. Chime checking account, a $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. There, can you go to school now? I can't. Why? Because I really am an old man and you kidnapped me. Oh, that's right, I'm the crazy one. Back to the basement we go. So close to freedom. <laughs> Plays God of War for the first time every Friday on Twitch. We also have content five days a week. Hope to see you there. In 1988, Pee Wee was arguably at the height of his success. His movie was a smash hit, his new kid show was a smash hit, he was popping up all over the place. He even hosted Saturday Night Live and The Late Show in character. You used to own a house here when you were, when you were a giant teen star. With Fabian, right? Yeah, we were both teenage idols at the time. You know, <laughs> Weird. So it only made sense to do a follow-up to the film that helped make him a household name. <laughs> big Top Pee Wee had a bigger budget than before, more effects than before, a larger audience ready to see it than before. And there's a reason you probably haven't heard it talked about in a while. I watched this when it came out in theaters at the exact right age and... <sighs> I put it on every once in a while, hoping this'll be the time I like it. This'll be when I see something I missed before that suddenly makes it brilliant. But, no. Not only is this not a very good sequel, but it's a very boring sequel. Pee Wee this time stays home on the farm, because there's a lot of comedic possibilities there. When a tornado literally blows through town, literally blowing a circus off the ground. When everyone is found and accounted for, Pee Wee immediately takes to the colorful characters. Eh, colorful in appearance, but not personality. Eh, we'll get to that in a bit. And asks if he can join. The problem is, not only do they not know where to put Pee Wee in the circus, but the townspeople made up entirely of old folks hate the circus and demand that they leave. Okay, so a circus seems like a good setup for this character in this world. It's funny Burton didn't come back to direct this as he works circuses into his story so much. This time, it's Randall Kleiser who's directed some films I really enjoy, some even including Paul Rubens. See you later, alligator! <laughs> At first, it seems the film is going to work, opening with a dream sequence of Pee-wee as a rock star and then disguising himself as Abraham Lincoln. And everybody falls for it. It's Abraham Lincoln! The film has some fun actors, including Chris Christopherson, Valerio Golino, Benicio Del Toro, Screech. It's a good lineup. But almost everything that worked in the first film is the opposite here. The world does not accept Pee-wee. It hates him. I don't want you running around my store, Pee-wee Herman. Everybody in town treats him miserably, and not in a fun way, just a miserable way. I'm sure you two beautiful ladies wouldn't mind letting me go ahead of Well, we certainly would mind. No one is as important in this community as Pee-wee Herman. Game's over. Pee-wee Herman wants a pick. First come, first serve. All right, all right! There's nowhere to travel to, so if you don't like this location or these characters, you're pretty much stuck. And, I don't know, maybe because the world of Pee Wee already seem like a circus, the idea of introducing a real one, the more I think about it, kind of seems less magical. These circus folk are ungodly boring. They all look great, but they have no identity. Which proves the point that Pee Wee isn't the only thing that has to work about Pee Wee. It needs to be the environment as well. It's so weird to see some of these incredibly charming actors, like, I perk up whenever I see them in a film, just invoke no emotion whatsoever. Also, I don't know any other way to say this. The film's a little pervy. Children! Oh, Vance is just teaching us to mud wrestle. Huh. Okay, so there's always been innuendo with Pee Wee that had a very sexual lean to it, but part of the charm of Pee Wee is that he was a little boy in a grown man's body, so there's things that he, and even the kids watching, wouldn't catch on to. Oh, look at that, Zombie's hands finally got here. Well, check him out, Zombie. Yeah, I will. I've had something I've wanted to do for a long time. 
Like, Pee-wee doesn't really get into girls, and if he did, he didn't really know the reason why. In the stand-up special, he uses shoe mirrors to look up a girl's dress, but when she says she's not wearing underwear, he's disappointed. I'm not wearing underpants. <laughs> he doesn't know why he's doing that. He probably just saw a friend do it and saw it annoyed her, so he did it to get attention. Here? He's horny as hell! Oh, Winnie. I guess you could argue the characters growing up, part of the pun. But even then, he seems kind of scuzzy. Like he cheats on his girlfriend who we later find out is his fiance for someone at the circus. Who was that? He's my fiance. They're both rightfully pissed off at him and yeah, we are too. What's charming about this? What's funny about this? Pee Wee could be bratty, but there was still an innocence to the way he acted. And this just feels very out of character. Though if you think the mud wrestling joke was just innocent weirdness, they literally show two women mud wrestling later to symbolize two people having sex. So, again. Huh. Also, wasn't Chris Christopherson a singer first? A needle in a haystack is very hard to find. I met this little woman, we had an awkward date. Each time the band strikes up, cock a doodle doo. Yeah, no. With that said, what does work in the movie, I'm not even sure is supposed to work in the movie. There are weird mistakes that I can't tell if are intentional or not, but they can sometimes get a laugh for how random they are. Like the pig in this movie can talk, but he literally doesn't say anything until randomly 10 minutes in. Even though he's been on screen that whole time. Let's see how this formula works. Okay, Pee Wee. It's so weird to wait that long, even though there were tons of other moments where any character would have said something, but doesn't. And also it's pretty funny knowing that's Wayne White the designer of the show, and a pretty big name artist now. When I first met this hippo, I was really quite rude. Now that we're together, I'm so glad I left this suit. There's a lion who sees him literally as food. He rushes towards him, but then it cuts to him being fine. What the hell? Who's that fluffy kitty? There's a moment where a bit of egg salad drops on Pee-wee's face and he uses his fiance's dress to wipe it off. And the next shot, there's not a speck on either of them. Like, hilariously so. Also, for a while, it had the longest on-screen kiss of any movie. It goes on so long, the score actually runs out of music and then starts back up again. <laughs> it's hard to say if these were all intentional or unintentional or half and half, but it does help give what's honestly a pretty dull movie a little of that surreal joy from the previous one. But because it was so dull, the movie failed to find an audience, resulting in bad reviews and a dismal box office. In fact, the whole Pee-wee craze was about to drop off because just as Pee-wee was going to the movies, Paul Rubens was... also going to the movies. Pee-wee would make a few appearances after, and some of them were very funny. Heard any good jokes lately? <laughs> but with his show being cancelled and him not appearing on shows anymore, his future looked bleak. Rubens finally took a break from the Pee Wee persona and took on a few supporting roles, many in Tim Burton films. Which makes sense as they were both responsible for their cinematic debuts. Pee Wee Herman as we knew him though was out of the spotlight for 20 years. In 2011, Paul Rubens attempted to make a comeback with the character. He took his show on the road once more, with a variation of his original stand-up combined with the characters from his kid show. It was a mix of his old material and his new material, and for the most part, people seemed on board. While Pee-wee certainly didn't hit the height of his popularity like he did in the 80s, people were excited to see their childhood icon back. So in 2016, Netflix and producer Judd Apatow decided to give Pee-wee one last adventure. They teamed up to give us Pee-wee's big holiday. I'll be totally honest, when I first saw this film, I remember being underwhelmed. But watching it again years later, it actually is better than I remember. It clearly tries to return to form like the first film with Pee Wee going on a road trip. This time, instead of trying to get his bike back, is to go to the birthday party of Joe Manganiello. And no, he's not playing a character, he's literally playing himself. In this world, he's kind of like the cool version of Pee Wee, so they immediately hit it off. Tired of being cooped up in one place and never traveling, even though he clearly did in the first one, but I guess this is a reset. He packs up and makes his way to California to hopefully make his friend's party in time. Of course, bumping into a bunch of colorful characters along the way. 
I like the guy celebrity that's not a nobody, but not a household name either. And he plays up doing the same stuff as Pee-wee, but in a cool way very well. And it's nice to see Pee-wee traveling again, regaining that spontaneity that was missing in the last one. Plus, the film is funny. Most of the jokes have either comedic or surreal payoffs. Like whenever Pee-wee dreams of being at the birthday party, he dreams it in Spanish. There's absolutely no reason why, and once again, that just makes it even funnier. So why do I remember this film not being that great the first time I saw it? It's obviously trying to be like Pee-wee's Big Adventure again. But it turns out that's the issue. I'm constantly comparing it to Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I wouldn't really do that with the kids show or with the stand-up. Hell, even Big Top Pee-wee I could kind of accept as its own new thing. But there's a lot of similar beats in this one. Like every film always opens with a dream. In this one, he's saying goodbye to an E.T. slash Mac and Me style alien, which is pretty hilarious. Once again, there's criminals on the run, there's a silly wake-up sequence, there's a woman looking to travel, played by the same actress who played Simone. There's characters that come back into the movie again, there's even a few jokes from Big Top Pee-wee where he puts on a painfully fake disguise and everybody falls for it. I don't mind too much, except the characters in Big Adventure are unforgettable. I'm always gonna remember Francis, and Simone, and Dottie, and Large Marge, and Mickey, and the bike gang. These characters aren't bad, but they seem like they're there just to perform the joke. They don't leave nearly as big an impact as the ones from Big Adventure. The only exception are the bank robbers, who I think are doing a parody of the Violent Years, one of them even has a Glenn or Glenda type sweater. Also, hi Maribel. Man, no wonder these movies are like cartoons, they practically star cartoons! <laughs> but still, it has a similar spirit and oddness as the first film that, while not quite matching it, is still appreciated. Not every joke works, and I certainly wouldn't call it a big finale, but in a weird way that feels right. The trilogy ends with him just going to a friend's birthday party. I don't know, there's something really wholesome and charming about that. I think if you compare it to Big Top, but not too much with Big Adventure, you might find yourself having a good time with this. And that's certainly something this character has given us. A good time. Pee Wee Herman is one part child and one part adult, so it makes sense his humor would appeal to one part child and one part adult. He found a unique kinetic energy that connected with kids, but also connected with grown-ups' memories of being a kid. With each, though, he always added something a little extra, whether it's his trademark suit and bow tie, or high to low voice, or just little inappropriate jokes you didn't know were inappropriate until you got a little older. When the character was done right, he created a world that was strange and operated on a completely different level of logic. But it was still a level of logic you could follow and laugh along with. The Pee Wee movies were interesting comedic experiments. Sometimes they worked, sometimes they didn't. But they create a character that'll stay with us for decades to come. Thank you, Paul Rubens, for leaving us a timeless icon. I'm Pee Wee Herman. I'm the luckiest boy in the world. Goodbye. Goodbye, boys and girls. Nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. Roll. This month for Cameos for Charity, we're doing Red Cross. We've been seeing a lot of disasters in nature recently, and Red Cross specializes in trying to help any way they can. Whether it's providing blood, sending in volunteers, helping near or far with disasters big or small, Red Cross provides a number of different ways to save lives. So, if you want a cameo of me saying happy birthday, or good luck, or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. Or if you're like, screw you, I can't even look at you. Well, consider giving to this organization anyway. You can give money, give blood, or even volunteer. They're amazing people that literally save lives, and you can help them out. Click on the link and see if this is a cause you can give to.